Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and a big thank you to my patrons for the ongoing support. We've just cracked 10k subscribers over here on YouTube and I am so thankful. But before I travel up to Auckland for the All Blacks vs Springboks game, I'm just going to preview the game, give my thoughts on the lineups that have been selected, then at the end of the video predict how the result might end up and we'll have a quick ad break between the two teams. So first off, as most of my audience, you guys are from South Africa. Africa, so we'll break down the away team to start off first. The front row, no huge surprises, I mean, Stephen Kitts off, he was an absolute freak at the scrum last week, he was outstanding. Bongi Mbanambi carried so hard, did his best in the open spaces, threw immensely, and Franz Mulherber held it all together behind those rucks and coached the boys brilliantly on the formation to take. Over at lock though, Eben Etzebeth, we're not sure if he's going to be withdrawn on the team or not. Etzebeth is slated to be returning from an injury, though his father has unfortunately passed away, and so rest in peace to Etzebeth's father. Um, Eben Etzebeth, I've wanted to see him in a live game my entire life, but you know what, if I have to wait a few more years, so be it. If he needs to get right away back to South Africa to go to his father's funeral, go for it, mate. I hope you're all good. Lou Diaga is the other lock. Um, if Itzabeth does end up playing with Diaga, it'll probably be over 50 tests that these two have played together at this point. Diaga is a perfect complement to Itzabeth, so spot on selection. It's over at the back row, though. This is where I have the problem. Quagga Smith has been named in the team, but after the outstanding effort from Marco van Staden, it appears that he is the third choice for the sixth jersey at open side flanker, which is really disappointing to me as Sia Khaleesi is yet to come back from injury. Marco van Staden is one of my favourite spring box. I just wanted to see him have a go. Franco Mostert, though, as Peter Steph Dutoy may have the jet lag, fair enough to start Mostert on the blind side at seven, whereas at number eight, Jasper Visa has just returned from the birth of his child, and so he's definitely going to be feeling a bit more fire it up than Etzebeth and he'll really be playing for his baby boy or girl. Into the backs, Faf de Klerk at 9, no surprises there, although I would prefer for Jaden Hendricks to be back from injury. And Damien Willemse has been preferred to Marnie Leboc. After Leboc had a really outstanding effort last week, um, fair enough they want to give both of their 10s a go pending on when Pollard is back. I am still thinking Pollard will start at the World Cup with Willemse covering centre, fullback, and of course, first five off the bench for that tournament. Makazoli Mapimpi. He's been picked over Kirtley Aranza, which is very, I think, annoying for a lot of Bok fans out there after this this amazing game that Aranza had last week. He was honestly just phenomenal. He did nothing wrong. Straight 10 out of 10, but you know you've got some pretty good depth on a guy like that isn't cracking the match day 23 whatsoever. Mpimpi, though, is a proven performance. Same with Cheslin Colby, so you know what? Good on them. Let's see how they go before the World Cup, and let's give them a hit out. The midfield, Damien Dialendi and Lucanio Arm. Um, this will be just... <laughs> Lucanio Arm has literally played only five tests without Dialendi as his midfield partner. This will be their 28th game in combination together, so I'm wishing them pretty good luck as well. And Vili the Roo rounds it at a fullback after a really good tactical kicking game last week. I'm not too surprised to see him there at all. Over to the reserves, Malcolm Marks, Thomas Dutoy, and Vincent Koch. They don't call it the bomb squad for no reason, guys. They've also gone for a 6-2 split again with RG Sineaman, really just trying to make that return from injury, get some positive stuff done. And as I've said before, I'm very glad that Sineaman has indeed returned. Peter Steph Dutoy, he played last week, might have a bit of jet lag, good on them for starting Mostert over him. And just think about the impact that Dutoy could bring off the bench considering he can cover both lock and seven while Sneiman can cover lock. They've got a guy who can do both and so Dwayne Vermeulen will come on straight to play number eight. Though it's going to be a bit of a mystery to me who plays over at six as Van Staden hasn't been picked in the team. Grant Williams over at nine. Well, the guy's a very promising player and he's well down on the depth chart, but he's been selected selected over Herschel Yanchis, and so, you know, I think Yanchis might be on the outer now, and form may have just put Williams up to be that fourth choice player over Yanchis, considering Reinach started last week, De Klerk starting this week, whereas Hendricks has started more tests than he came off the bench last year, though he is of course second on the depth chart due to De Klerk playing in the Lions series, and his own injury in 2021. Marnie LeBox off the bench as well though, so... 
I'm not really sure how this dynamic of Willemse starting and Leboc off the bench is going to work. Perhaps Willemse is going to play a few minutes in midfield, Leboc will come on for 10, maybe LaRue is going to play the full 80. It's going to be very interesting because I'm not entirely sure how Leboc would work off the bench unless he's just coming straight on to play at 10 at first 5. We'll take a quick ad break then we'll get over to my thoughts on the All Blacks. Well, everybody, the All Blacks have probably gone for, I guess, a sensible selection if they want to win. I'm just not sure how they're going to give a few guys their chance to get, um, get themselves proven before the World Cup, though, as Cam Roygaard and Sami Penny Finau in particular, some really just informed players, have missed out again. The front row, though, the starter's absolutely solid. De Groot's the first choice at loose head prop. Taylor's the first choice at hooker. And Tyrell Lomax is the first choice at tight head prop. Taylor has played absolutely absolutely massive minutes under Foster and as he's a key decision maker for the team well he's backed up by an even better player off the bench in Samasoni Taukiaho. You have the guy who knows all of the calls first up get stuff done if he has a shocker off the line out like how he did a few times last year an even better player is going to come off the bench and as Taukiaho's played the second to most minutes a hooker behind Taylor that's absolutely fair enough. Sam Whitelock though he hasn't returned from injury yet he isn't playing and so Brody Retallick and Scott Barrett are going to be starting together at lock and so you know what after playing a pretty decent game last week it's fair enough they keep Shannon Frizzell starting it's just that like I would have preferred to see Fina come off the bench with Barrett at six if Whitelock was available for selection and get Fina to do his best impression of Shannon Frizzell off that bench. Sam Kane and Artie Savia are the first two names on Fozzie's team sheet and so Kane is obviously going to be the captain with Whitelock not playing in this game due to injury and Aaron Smith and Richie Mwonga are going to resume their starting um, roles as the 9-10 axis. Smith is the most capped All Blacks back of all time, and Mwonga has played the most minutes at 10 under Fozzie. A few people weren't too impressed with how Mwonga went last week, but I think, to be fair, Los Pumas did get the front football back. They did start actually competing at set piece, so Mwonga wasn't going to have as easy a ride as Damian McKenzie, who has been dropped, but considering how the team stacks up in the back line, it makes more sense to have a reserve winger and a reserve midfielder on that bench rather than McKenzie who has missed out on the match day 23. Um, the midfielders, Geordie Barrett and Rico Ioane, Dallas McLeod's obviously still unavail sorry, unavailable from concussion, Anton Leonard Brown is still suspended, David Havili returns in August and so Geordie Barrett's the only guy who can really wear that jersey in the squad right now, though his better position is fullback. It's okay though, his brother's covering there, Bowden's played a significant amount minutes, minutes at both 10 and 15 under Fozzy, and obviously Bowden is the second to most capped All Blacks back of all time behind Aaron Smith, while he's joined in the outside backs by the best possible choices for wingers. I'm so happy to see Mark Talia also back from injury, joined by Will Jordan at 14. These two are not going to make a lot of errors, and they will be up for the challenge under the high ball against the Springboks. Talia will be especially fired up, especially as his father was born in South Africa, and Talia's father is isn't in his life and so Talia is going to really just have a massive go at smashing the box. He's in his hometown in Auckland. He will want to make an absolute show of it. Jordan, I'm very happy to see him back as well after he started to get migraines a few weeks ago. Thank the Lord he's back in. The reserve front row is, as I said, Samasoni Taukiaho is off the bench and Tamaiti Williams is debuting. Back in 2021, I said he would be a bolter for the All Blacks, though he's debuting two years later. It's finally happening. He is going to be the heaviest All Black of all time, but the best thing is he has got a good scrum technique and he's mobile. The problem I've got though is that Nepo Laulala, though it's fair enough he's played the second to most minutes at tight head prop under Fozzie behind Lomax, is that Laulala is six feet tall, whereas Williams is six foot five. I'm a fair bit taller than Laulala, so I wouldn't want to be in the scrum with him. And so Williams, who is taller than me, it would be even worse for Williams. And so fingers crossed, the scrum isn't going to be very imbalanced with Williams and Laulala scrummaging together because that could end badly against a box side. Though Dutoy and Cog are a little bit different in terms of height. So fingers crossed that is going to be okay. Tupava is the reserve lock. So with Frizzell there, they're still going for a reserve lock, which is a little bit weird. And Dalton Papali'i. 
picked over Luke Jacobson, so I'm starting to suspect perhaps the All Blacks are going to take five locks to the World Cup and five loose forwards. If so, that would be a bit dodgy not to have a next up number eight, but I guess we're going to have to see how this thing all goes. Finlay Christie preferred to Cam Royguard. I guess maybe they're going to move Bowden to 10 if Wonga comes back and finally give Will Jordan some minutes at 15 for the first time in his career as he's yet to play minutes at 15 at test level. Braden Enor, they're trying to get him as much game time as possible as he has been confirmed as the next up at 13, whereas Caleb Clark rounds out the team. A lot of people said he did nothing last week. In my post-match analysis, I actually saw, no, he did a fair bit. It just wasn't the flashy stuff we're used to from wingers. So overall, I think both of the teams have gone for relatively sensible selections. Probably unwise in terms of giving the unproven players a chance before the World Cup, just to give them that hit out, see what their form's like. But if they want to win this game, both teams have got some very good lineups over here. Um, it could honestly go either way. I'm actually too scared to even make a prediction. So because South Africa have a little bit less of that jet lag, I am going to lean more towards them. And you know what? I'm going to say the Springboks to win by one point if we don't get a draw. Um, all these All Black Springboks fixtures since 2018 or so have just come down to the wire. And with the fact that a few of the Springboks have been in New Zealand for over 10 days, that'll be the distinct advantage, especially considering the fact that notable players in the type 5 forwards, such as Malcolm Marks and Eben Etzebeth, were amongst that group of players who came to New Zealand early. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Make sure to see me over on Instagram, over on threads, and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy my content. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later, guys. Remember to give the thumbs up and subscribe and like. <laughs> Cheers from Max.